So the M2 MacBook Air has been out for about a year and a half now at this point, releasing in June of 2022. And I've been using it on a day-to-day -day basis, so what I wanted to do was give you guys my long-term impressions and review of this M2 MacBook Air in the Midnight Blue version and see how it's held up from a design standpoint, a hardware standpoint, a software standpoint, and see if it's still a viable option going into 2024, even though Apple just released the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max MacBook Pros. So let's get into my long-term review of the M2 MacBook Air. This video is brought to you by 9to5Mac partner Mosul, the only Apple unified platform for business, but more of them a little bit later. Let's get into this review. So I want to break this video down into a few different aspects. I want to talk about how the design is held up, how the software is held up, and then finally, some use cases and who this laptop is ultimately for because I'm probably the perfect type of person and user for this laptop, whereas some other people might need something a little bit more powerful or maybe even something a little less expensive in that front because depending on what you're going to use it for, it is going to solve problems or you might need a little bit more at the end of the day. But from a design standpoint, again, I've had this since day one, so it's almost a year and a half in terms of age with this computer, and I got the midnight blue version. So yes, it is a fingerprint magnet even a year and a half later, so if that's something that's going to be bothering you every single day, then maybe the midnight blue version is not going to be for you, and it's still comes in those three other colorways which is that goldish color champagne silver and then space gray as well it doesn't come in that new space black color if that's something that you want now i remember early on there was a big complaint that that blue color would chip over time and i do want to show you that for the usb-c ports themselves again i use those usb-c ports every single day by plugging into an external display and yes you miss the usb-c ports every once in a while and you see a tiny bit of discoloration in the actual USB-C ports, but again, nothing to write home about, and you have to be really looking for it to see if that color did get chipped away. Now, you might notice that on the top, on the back of the display, so basically the top of the laptop itself, there is some chipping of the paint, but that is 100% my fault. I put some adhesive magnets on there that were extremely strong, and to remove them, I had to basically chip away at it with some metal and some, basically use my Apple card and also a ceramic knife to get it out of there, so, Honestly, I'm surprised that not more paint chipped off of it, but that was a very extreme situation where I had to remove these magnets that were so stuck on there, it was unbelievable. So in any other use case where you're not putting magnets or any other adhesive, or even if you do use adhesive that's a little bit weaker, for lack of a better term, you should be totally fine from a paint and kind of finish situation. The paint is gonna remain the way that it is. It's still just gonna be a fingerprint magnet, but you shouldn't really need to worry about the paint chipping overall. I just wanted to give everybody my two cents and be transparent as to how I got that chip paint on the top of the laptop. But other than that, the hardware is absolutely amazing. I haven't, like, I don't really baby this laptop at all. It does sit in the laptop sleeve of my computer bag, but for the most part, I throw it around. It's used on the couch. It's used in different surfaces, whether I'm in an office, at a WeWork, at my dining table, at my desk here. So this is a very mobile laptop. You're not gonna need to worry about babying this laptop too much from a hardware perspective and from a design perspective because it is meant to be thrown around. It is meant to be used on the go, and it's made for, the, for that kind of individual and that kind of user. Now, this M2 MacBook Air was the first time Apple left the old design language of the MacBook Air, which I believe we originally got in 2008 when Steve Jobs got on stage and removed it from that manila envelope. Because we got that kind of wedge design, which is absolutely beautiful, but this is the first time that Apple kind of got away from that totally and kind of had a more MacBook Pro aesthetic, which a much more squared off design and industrial design, still amazingly thin and still extremely lightweight for what it is. But we did get rid of that wedge design, which honestly, I'm not missing whatsoever. But that is completely subjective, so if you do want to go with that wedge design, Apple still sells their M1 MacBook Air for I believe $899 or $999, which is still a great price for that computer. And then to kind of round off on the hardware and design aspect, the keyboard is still pristine. I haven't had any issues with like a missing key or a key being broken. And I type on this thing a lot. Yes, again, there's gonna be fingerprints on there, but I didn't wanna clean the laptop at all before actually filming this so you guys can see a real life situation and what it looks like, you know, 18 months after it being released. The Touch ID sensor is still extremely responsive. It's, I don't even know how, how it works so quickly. I, like I just tap it and it unlocks everything or I tap it and I'm Apple paying, which is kind of dangerous every now and then, but for the most part, everything works exactly as it's intended a year and a half later and it should work but I just wanted to make sure that people are aware that I'm not losing anything nothing is degrading over time at least not yet that remains yet to be seen if maybe five years down the road some things start to kind of break down but a year and a half later it still works as if it's brand new so no worries on that front and then some other hardware pieces, the trackpad is still extremely responsive. The trackpad works with a gesture-based controls extremely well. I'm never having accidental clicks, which is great. So it does have a nice palm rejection because it is a big surface when it comes to a trackpad, especially compared to other laptops in this same kind of market, in the same kind of space from a price point perspective. And then also the display is still pristine. This is the first time Apple went away from their 13.3 inch display and went to a 13.6 inch display. It gets plenty bright for indoor and even some outdoor use. It does have that notch, which houses the 1080p webcam, which was 
was a nice upgrade from the 720p webcam that we've had on the MacBook Air since, again, probably since 2008. But I still wish there was Face ID. Like, I love Face ID in all my iPad devices and my iPhone devices. Touch ID still works amazingly well and extremely fast, but I do wish that since we are having that notch there, which is taking up some weird space on the screen itself, I wish we are able to actually have Face ID on there, which I don't think Apple's going to be doing anytime soon. It's just more of a design language standpoint because I don't think they really needed to do the notch. I think they just wanted to have everything even across the board moving forward. Maybe a dynamic island in the future. Who knows? Hey, I got to interject for just one moment to thank our sponsor for today's video. Mosul is the only Apple unified platform for business. By combining five different applications in a single Apple platform, Mosul completely automates deploying, managing, and protecting Apple devices at work. Mosul's Apple MDM allows companies to deploy new Apple devices without ever having to touch them, installing all apps and applying all configurations automatically. Mosul's integrated security tools will ensure all your devices are always compliant with main cybersecurity benchmarks while also automatically detecting and neutralizing potential malwares. Through an Apple-specialized next-generation antivirus and identity management, Mosul allows your company to bring SSO to Apple devices, allowing employees to log in on work devices using their Google, Microsoft, or Okta credentials. For patch management, Mosul not only allows you to always keep the OS of all the devices automatically updated, but also installs and patch any required apps. Finally, Mosul also integrates a powerful online privacy and security tool that ensures that all employees' online activity is compliant, protected, and safe. All this at a price point that's less than any individual application. If you're the tech wizard at work, use the link below and get a free 30-day trial of Mosul. And check why Mosul is the only solution you need to protect your Apple devices at work. And now, back to the review. So now we got the design and the hardware out of the way, let's talk about the internals and the software and ultimately my use case and why I think I'm the perfect user, or at least a certain type of user that's made for this MacBook Air and vice versa. So I only upgraded the RAM. So I went to 16 gigs of RAM, which I believe was an extra $200. I did not upgrade the storage because I don't need it. I use iCloud for everything. And the 16 gigs of RAM was just for me to future-proof myself a little bit. So from a software perspective, I use this thing as pretty much a netbook as an email machine, as a Slack machine for not even content consumption. Like I'll have maybe 15 to 20 Chrome tabs open. I'll have Safari open on the side playing a YouTube video that's signed into my account. Also have a bunch of messaging apps open like Telegram and Slack and things like that. So I'll be able to have a bunch of applications running at the same time, but they aren't super intensive. The most intensive one has to be Chrome because I do get a little notification from my Clean My Mac X little kind of utility that says like, hey, do you want to clear up some storage? Because Google Chrome is taking up, you know, eight gigs of RAM of your six so outside of that, Google Chrome is probably my most intensive use case. Now, for testing purposes, I have used things like iMovie and Final Cut Pro and things like Photoshop, and they work to a certain extent. You know, I wouldn't probably put all of my workflow on here, but it can still have multiple layers of 4K. It can still have a couple of music layers and audio layers. You're still able to export relatively quickly because the M2 chip is just so efficient and so powerful that you're able to get some of that stuff done. But you know who you are if you need a little bit more horsepower. If you need more horsepower, you want to go into the MacBook Pro lineup. You want to get into that M3, the M3 Pro, the M3 Max, and see, or maybe even get a refurbished M2 Pro or something along those lines. But again, you know who you are if you're needing this thing to be your video editing machine, if you need it to be your photo editing machine, if you are actually maybe coding or rendering games, because that is not what this kind of category of computer is for. This is for the person that's on the go, that needs an email computer, that needs a Slack computer, that needs just a communication machine, something to be able to maybe run some Excel sheets or get into the Google workspaces. That is what this thing is. This is a glorified netbook that is a little bit overpowered compared to other netbooks, of course, and can do a lot of that other stuff. And there's a lot of overlap into the MacBook Pro arena. But again, I'm going to keep reiterating, you know who you are if you need that 14 inch or 16 inch, maybe M3 Max MacBook Pro. But from a longevity standpoint, this thing has not hiccuped whatsoever. Now, I am glad that I got the 16 gigs of RAM because I think 8 gigs of RAM might be a little bit on the lower side, but I also think that you can still get away with it if you do want to go at the smallest price point, which I believe is $1,099 for the entry level 8 gig and 256 gig of storage M2 MacBook Air. But everything still works extremely well. Like there is no freezing. I I don't think I've even had that like spinning rainbow of death cursor, which is something that I used to get all the time with my Intel MacBook Air. So if you just want something that's very reliable, that works, that opens instantly, that has applications that work super efficiently, that has amazing battery life throughout the day, because I'll go an entire workday without charging this thing, and at the end of the day, be at about 15% battery. So even about 18 months later, the software and the hardware still combined to be extremely snappy. Everything works as intended. Mac OS Sonoma kind of even bridges the gap even closer between iPadOS, iOS, and macOS because everything is a little bit more playful, but everything works as intended as I mentioned. 
So at the end of the day, who is this computer for? Like I've mentioned earlier, I'm the perfect use case. It's funny because I actually use my iPad for my video editing, my thumbnail editing, because I, I don't know, I just like it on there a little bit more. It is a workhorse of a machine and it's kind of intended for that design work to a certain extent. But for me, the empty MacBook Air is like my Slack machine. It's my email machine. You know, every once in a while I'll have a YouTube video playing. You know, I have Google Workspaces open. I use a lot of Microsoft Excel when needed and things like that to make sure maybe all that stuff is done. I use it to like pay my bills for everyday tasks for personal use and things along those lines. So that is who this MacBook computer is for. And maybe if you want to do a little bit more, like you are maybe running a small business and need to do some promotional material, maybe a 1080p video or a 4K video in vertical, a 30 second video edit, it can do that with iMovie and Final Cut Pro. Again, I wouldn't go crazy with it because it might slow down over time, but if you do need it to do that, kind of situation in that workflow, it can do it if needed. And I will reiterate one last time, you know who you are if you need a little bit more horsepower, go for the M2 MacBook Pro or something along those lines. Again, go to the refurbished section, maybe a used section as well to get something a little bit cheaper and to get you a little bit more horsepower moving forward. And that is ultimately who this computer is for. It's for the person that just needs an email machine, it's for the person that's always moving around, it's for the person that wants a great price to performance ratio when it comes to what you get for value in terms of money because to my opinion, this is punch for punch and pound for pound, the best price to performance ratio tech product out there. You get a very modern laptop that runs Mac OS Sonoma that can pretty much accomplish any task from a administrative standpoint and from an emailing standpoint and from kind of a business administration standpoint, you're able to get everything done. It supports pretty much every application that you would need from that silo of use cases. This M2 MacBook Air checks off every single box. Battery life is great. The display is amazing. 13.6 inches is just big enough where you can fit a lot of applications on there at once. The keyboard is pristine. Touch ID works extremely well. The build quality is amazing. Like there's nothing really negative that you can say about this laptop in my personal opinion, but leave some comments down below about what you think. And again, one of its best features is that price to performance ratio and the value that you get for your money. People like to spend money on their laptops and use it for five to six to seven years moving forward. And that's what this laptop is going to be able to do. And there's always deals on this laptop. Like I saw even the 15 inch MacBook Air, the M2 version for $1,050 on Amazon the other day. I'll leave some links down below of the best deals that I find online. I've seen this M2 MacBook Air for $900, which is unbelievable. And there's also the refurbished section on Apple's website. And a little secret if you made it to the very end, if you're in the US, I can only vouch for the US, you can go to the education store and get $100 off without showing any proof or anything. And then every add-on on top of that, I think, believe is $20 off. So I got the M2 MacBook Air 16 gig version for I believe under $1,200 if I'm doing the math correctly, because it was $100 off from the actual price and then $20 off the $200 upgrade. So it definitely was below $1,200 for the 16 gig version through the education store. So a little secret, for those of you that haven't tried the education store yet. But that will just about do for this video, everybody. I wanted to give you guys my use cases, my personal situation with the M2 MacBook Air. I love the computer. I cannot recommend it enough. When people ask me, should I get an iPad or a MacBook? For me personally, I love my iPad and I'm biased towards the iPad. I know it's a more expensive device. I know that you can probably do more or, or at least have a more familiar experience on Mac OS versus iPad OS. But for the most part, I recommend the M2 MacBook Air or even the M1 MacBook Air sometimes because for the price, you know, you get, obviously you get a keyboard, you get a trackpad. There's no additional things you need to buy to make it more of a laptop experience. It runs the latest version of Mac OS and it's going to last you five to seven years if you take care of it. So I usually steer people towards a MacBook Air because it will encompass about 99% of all of your use cases at that price point and you're going to be happy along the way. But let me know with a comment down below. Are you guys M2 MacBook Air users? What are you guys looking to upgrade to? Are you still using an Intel based MacBook Air, which I'm sorry for you if you still are because I remember having one and it was terrible compared to the M2 and even the M1. But I'll leave everything linked down below if you guys do want to check any of these actual MacBooks out and see what the best deals are because I know holidays are right around the corner and there are going to be some great deals moving forward. But that will do for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. Share with me some of your use cases. What do you use your MacBook for? Are you on the MacBook Pro side, on the MacBook Air side? Are you getting maybe one of these M3 MacBook Pros? And definitely stay tuned because we do have some M3 MacBook Pro content coming real soon from Jeff. But if you want to watch some more iOS, macOS, or iPadOS videos, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. MacBook Air, best bang for buck.